from the morning reading. The SBX pauses on Monday, oil rises for the fourth straight day. Nine of ten sectors moved lower on Monday, XLI, XLY, and XLE were the strongest sectors, while XLRE was the weakest sector. Oil futures rose 60 cents to close at 48.65. Breath weakened compared to the prior session as decliners led 1757 to 1283 on the New York Stock Exchange and led 1645 to 1162 on the NASDAQ. On the S&P 500 snapshot, a weak start to the employment week. The big event for the market this week is, of course, Friday's employment report. But with the action on Monday, we got some popular clues about manufacturing. The market PMI hit a three-month low, still an expansion, but a disappointingly slow one. The ISM PMI showed comparably slow expansion, but the September number was a welcome bounce from contraction in August. The benchmark S&P 500 opened lower and zigzagged to its negative 0.62% intraday low during the lunch hour. It struggled higher in the afternoon and cut the loss to a negative 0.33% at the close. The yield on the 10-year note closed at 1.63%, up 3 basis points from the previous close, but down 2 basis points from the previous weekly close. Defensive sectors have been falling back, though they've had a good year-to-date return through September. Defensive sectors got hit in the third quarter, while economically sensitive sectors took the lead. Bulls have cited that as a good sign for stocks that investors are coming around to economic growth, and that means more gains going forward. But when we've seen the most aggressive sectors lead and defensive sectors lag, the next quarter's returns weren't good enough to suggest it's a positive sign, even when the next quarter is October to December. Large options traders are getting worried. Last week, they bought 115 put options for every 100 call options, one of the most defensive postures of the bull market. Other times, their position like this tended to lead to higher stock prices, though there was a big failure in 2011. Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I'll provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 6.16 a.m. Mountain Time, and I'm recording this in preparation for the market day of October the 4th, 2016. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's go ahead and dive into the morning report. And as of the time of this cut, all four of the U.S. broad-based indices were just up above scratch. Crude oil was down about 0.72%, Euro was down about half a percent, bonds were up just above scratch, and gold was down about a third of a percent. China continues to be closed, Hong Kong up about half a percent, Japan up nearly one percent, Germany up about half a percent, United Kingdom up approaching two percent. In terms of the macroeconomic reports for today in the U.S. of note, it's scratch. Nothing on the slate. Looking forward to tomorrow, we have ADP non-farm employment change, so the predecessor to the monthly employment report, and ISM non-manufacturing PMI, factory orders, the weekly crude oil inventory report. So a bit more activity tomorrow, but very quiet on the macroeconomic report section for today. In terms of current volatility conditions, short-term VIX climbed a little bit to a 13 skew, still benign. IV percentiles all still very, very low. Um, at a 25 for the S&P, a 12 for the Russell, 20 for the NASDAQ, and 24 for the Dow. No standard deviation moves were put in on any of the four U.S. broad-based indices yesterday. Though you see, we certainly have had plenty of volatility as we churn back and forth in a narrow coiling pattern. Um, but with volatility, that's we've talked about a lot of range-bound activity in recent weeks, but of recent days 
it's been uh, somewhat range bound with volatility though so you should take note that there is this increasing volatility and let's go ahead and go to the charts one of the things is um, we've been talking about this triangle here and a bit of a coiling pattern and normally as you go into a triangle you look to see what was the condition going in well this time it was bullish going into the triangle now this is somewhat muted by the fact that this is a um, you know a symmetrical triangle not an ascending triangle a little weaker chart pattern also we're getting a lot of look at these arrows here down up down up down up you know lots of arrows in a relatively short period of time also note we're in the cloud so an awful lot of the expectation of the probability of this chart pattern going out to the top side has been muted so that doesn't mean that the bullish bias isn't still there but what it means is that um, we've got to be more careful probably take targets earlier and uh, probably if um if you were to take a for example on the s p if you were to take a breakout you probably would want to get out right here before you come into these all-time highs and not expect that you're going to get much past that um the other thing is that you might want to reduce position size so uh the takeaway from all this is that we continue to be you know slightly bullish in our bias but very conservatively so because there's a lot of warning signs here a lot of asterisk coming in with these patterns and this volatility and this chop you know most time when you see a lot of arrows like this it breaks down so but yet the pattern and the intermediate term is bullish so there's some um, Kind of crisscrossing currents it's kind of like when the tide changes in the middle of a jetty you can literally have water flow in both directions and um we're having some of that happen right now in terms of the dow it is very much the same pattern and for some reason our paper money is a bit slow today let's give this thing just a second So here are our Dow futures, and again, this kind of coiling pattern, but with some increasing volatility, and again, in the cloud. So somewhat neutralized compared to where we'd normally be with this pattern coming in to the setup. When we go to the NASDAQ, of course, it's been more bullish, and yet also in this kind of consolidation, kind of a horizontal bull flag, as it were, but we're probably looking for a horizontal breakout, you know, anything above this 48.93 kind of area. Um, we'd like to see a good confirmed close above that area to kind of mark that breakout. But as it stands right now, um, this one's certainly more bullish than the first two index that we looked at. And um, with the Russell, uh, this one also has been in a bit of a consolidation and a bit of a volatile consolidation. But again, above the cloud, a bit more of a, probably more like a bull flag. But again, probably short-term targets and very short-term trading is the rule of the day and not looking for longer moves until we probably clear this 1264 area. So not a lot of overhead opportunity, and we are, as you recall, and we'll get to the um, daily report in just a moment, but we've been talking about being market phase four. Well, that is characterized by being in these patterns that are up against horizontal resistance, and that's exactly what we are seeing right now on the broad-based U.S. indices. Crude oil, also note, coming up against horizontal resistance. And we talked about perhaps taking some targets and getting out of this position in front of this 49.43 area. Now, uh, you know, do we double top here, pull back, then go back through? Or does something happen to give us the energy and momentum to get through? If we get through, we likely are running all the way up to this 51.67 area. But... Um, I wouldn't put too much probability into getting through that 49.43 area without some additional impetus coming into the market. Um, that would be a relatively low probability trade 
um, to have that as your target. Um, bonds, of course, have um, you know started to show after being for a very long time intermediate term bullish, has started to show some pronounced weakness, and you know we're starting to see these formations of lower lows and lower highs and now we're below the clouds and lots of overhead resistance um, activity yesterday certainly was about you know where the defensive sectors and the interest rate sensitive sectors were certainly taking something of a hit and you see that in the price action of these long bonds the real estate sector as well let me take a quick look at that here's real estate these are your REITs and so forth, especially when we go to IYR and you see IYR had quite a breakdown yesterday, now down below the cloud. So this has been a hero area for a long time, just like the bonds were, but it started to show signs of breaking down and, and putting in these kind of lower highs and lower lows and, um, and starting to um, perhaps have a significant change in direction. So kind of be aware of what all that means to your portfolio. VIX, of course, we've still been, um, you know, bumping just above the area of the three-year support area, which runs around this, you know, 11 and change area, currently trading around a 13 handle. So relatively low volatility, and that is in alignment with, you know, a slightly bullish market. Not a lot of fear in this market, but also means that there's not a lot of premium to be paid in this current market condition so you know every time we get a little bit of a pop you know it very quickly subsides and comes right back down though you see we've had more volatility of late than we did during the middle of the summer so things are starting to set up for potentially you know something of a breakout the problem is with of course the charts as we went through the S&P and so forth is that it's not entirely clear which way this breakout will go. So we probably need to be very patient and wait for the breakout to happen and then be ready with our action plan to be able to try to take advantage of that as much as possible. If you want to get out in front of that, if you want to say that the overall bias is bullish and you want to take a small position in front of that, fine. But just understand that you're being speculative and very aggressive to be in front of a pattern that has so many asterisks written with its, um, its story. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the daily report. Now, we were talking as we were going through some of those charts about this intermediate term phase opinion being a market phase four up against resistance, and you saw that in action. In terms of the three market timing signals, they're all mechanical in nature. Well, the first one comes to us from IBD, and that is in confirmed uptrend. It is bullish. GMI index, a five out of six still. And that buy signal has been in place since 9.22. GMI 2 is still a 7 out of 8. So no changes there. Also no changes from yesterday on the decision point scoreboard. We have in general um, pretty decent support for the short to intermediate term on the S&P and the NASDAQ. But um, have some... Um, you know, mixed signals on the S&P 100, the largest of the large, and then also in that same theme, the big Dow 30, also quite mixed. So it would seem that the big, big caps are the ones that are giving us the mixed signals, whereas the um, broader economy and the more tech-oriented economy perhaps is, you know, faring a bit better, and we're getting a little better signals from there. But still, you know, let's not get away. There's a lot of neutral and a lot of bearish signals here. We still have a lot of mixed signals. So that's what we expect to give us kind of choppy markets. And certainly while our overall consensus on the market timing signal continues to be slightly bullish, just like we took away from our chart analysis, from our technical analysis, um, it's got a lot of asterisk to it. And we've got to be pretty conservative in this kind of market posture. Position sizing opinions both remain at 100%. And this is I'm um, talking about in terms of core portfolio on the first. Now, the, other, the second one is about an active trader, and that's based on volatility. It's also at 100%. I'd put a couple asterisks by that. Make sure that your targets are appropriate for the current chart patterns. 
And then also that um, if you're trying to get out in front of breakout uh, patterns, you know, that might want to be a reduced position size. In terms of the intermediate term market posture, things have improved here. We are a strong bull now, second day signal. Um, the Dow is a weak bull. Uh, NASDAQ, though, severely strong bull. It's up over 80 once again. And also the Russell, also strong bull. So it has also resumed an intermediate term market posture to the plus side. So uh, everybody's lined up here to various degrees of bullishness. Um, this is also supported by a bullish sentiment line, though that bullish sentiment line has been falling from the upper um, area. And that often leads to also to see choppy markets. And certainly that has been the, um, the conditions we've been seeing, um, choppy and increasing volatility. So still slightly bullish, but with um, more difficult trading conditions. And so all these indicators are basically lining up with, you know, the kind of price action that we've been experiencing of late. There really is not much to... Um, you know, to say is contrary or doesn't make sense. Everything seems to kind of fit one into the nether. Um, so um, we just have to recognize what the current market conditions are and make sure that our trading is in alignment. Hedge warning status remains zero plus, normal with some cautionary aspects. Um, in terms of the three strategy opinions, VIX is inside the acceptable window to initiate new positions. Just remember, we're still in that coiling pattern, though, consolidation patterns at least on all four of the U.S. broad-based indices. So with um, such low probabilities of being able to predict which way it's going to break from those patterns, um, your option income strategies might want to be you know, accommodative to that potential break that is coming so kind of keep that in mind um, it's a bit of an opportunity cost if you don't put stuff on then you don't make your theta and yet at the same time you know clearly uh, these patterns are setting up for something bigger and it would seem given the um, the symmetrical triangle on the s p that we're likely to have that happen sooner than later and that we're coming into the apex of that pattern Cover call strategies and put selling. You see, we're still very conservative here. No change from yesterday. Two to one ratio in the money versus out of the money. Two to one ratio of low beta versus high beta positions in the composition of the portfolio. So being uh, both able to initiate new positions while at the same time um, also being pretty conservative. Now, that being said, I have myself a very, very thorough screening process in which I you know, set up for cover calls, what I call the cover call mastery strategy. And um, I had no symbols clear that watch list for this week. Now, one of the things that that tells me is that um, things are not strongly conducive to doing cover calls. And that, um, you know, normally if I've got good, strong, strong bull trending markets i have a pile of symbols that come through that screening process and are there for consideration so to, to me that was a bit of a warning and you know certainly in line with this opinion of this two to one ratio of in the money out of the money to the one ratio of low beta high beta if you're going to take a position in, in a cover call right now just know that um you know, those targets and so forth need to be indeed, you know, using these more conservative setups because um, market conditions are certainly giving us plenty of warning signs. Put selling much the same way. You might wait to see if we break to the bottom and then give you an opportunity to put on some put positions um, in some of those watch list items that you have. Uh, certainly defined risk and scale and the willing to the scale, the position size that you're willing to own would always be um, conducive. In terms of specific warning areas, we see really only one, this high distribution count that persists on the S&P. Trend base, it's pretty much all clean. Uh, the key intermarket risk aversion indicators, this is kind of interesting. I've started to see that, you know, these are all rolling up now. So not quite crossed over to risk on in their structure but getting very close and frankly if we had another day or two of positive action from these indicators we would have everything go to risk on so 
Um, some movement starting there. In terms of sentiment, very benign, neutral in all four of the markets. The fear and greed index also relatively neutral with a slight bias to the fear side. In terms of sector specific, you can see a lot of red from yesterday. Um, just remember, this is one company. You know, so in the telecom, you got, you know, about half the breadth was positive, but this is a breadth that's made up of five companies and only one of those two big companies was positive. Industrials though, and healthcare clearly, you know, had better breadth to the positive side. Uh, and yet, um, you know, for the most part, most of these sectors were net negative for the day. You see utilities, consumer staples, real estate, all three of the defensive sectors. You know, we talk about the stubs. And you, so you have the staples, the um, telecom, which, you know, had one positive company, the utilities, and uh, the bonds. And we could probably also now throw in real estate into that an acronym of stubs in some fashion. I'll have to think about how to do that. But, um, but the defensive sectors were all roundly um, worrisome yesterday. And you see a bit of a Christmas tree in terms of our market postures when we look at the three different time frames for the sectors. And when we look for consistency, well, the best thing we can do right now is probably find technology, materials, industrials, energy, and uh, transportation, probably the ones that are showing the most consistency uh, and both holding and not just bullish patterns across the three time frames, but also uh, being consistently able to be there. Um, and you see the percent changes for yesterday, but note, you know, green, red, red, green, green, red, you know, a lot of chop here, so not very much follow through. So swing trading, probably very difficult if you're trading for targets are, that are larger than perhaps you should have given the current markets. So just kind of keep all this in mind uh, and what these indicators are telling you. Well, that should be enough for today. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. We're just a bit over 20 minutes. And so we'll go straight to the disclaimers. Uh, disclaimers as always, hit the pause button if you need more time to review the disclaimers. Also note the hyperlink down here at the bottom for the full set of disclosures. And we should be back here tomorrow for the market preview uh, and the session, uh, you know, tomorrow morning. In the meantime, manage your risk, watch those patterns, watch those risk factors, keep the hedge risk level in mind as you build out your portfolio and manage your positions and everything should fall into place for you. In the meantime, good trading and go learn something.